Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio and host of People of Distinction. The talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info. Or you can always email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Lisa Michelle Middleton. And we're going to be discussing her amazing book, A Poet's Diary. Now, it's available for purchase through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, pretty much wherever books are sold. Head on over there today and pick up your copies. And just to point it out, there's another book, another poetry book, still in creation, that you're going to want to check back in for frequently, okay? Now, as I mentioned, it's still in creation, so it's not available for purchase just yet. But people, by the time we've concluded here today... Not only are you going to run to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and embark upon this wonderful journey down a poet's diary, but you're going to be so fascinated by the words on those pages, I promise you, you're going to want to check back in to get that other book the moment it becomes available. And before we go any further, I do want to take this opportunity and quickly point out that Lisa was brought to our network, People of Distinction, today by one of the best advertising firms in the business. And you already know, I'm talking about Author Reputation Press. So listen to me. If you're a writer out there and you've embarked upon this journey, you've written a book, although now you find yourself at a dead end because, well, you now you need help moving the book, right? I got some fantastic advice for you. Contact ARP. They're one of the best in the business to do it. And frankly, people, this is what they specialize in, okay? Their fantastic team is waiting by to assist you. Head on over to AuthorReputationPress.com today and gather all of the ways that they're going to help maximize your creative endeavors. And listen, it is an absolute pleasure to have Lisa here on the line. Now, I mentioned it to you already. This is a poetry book, so you already have an idea of what to expect. And can I just take this opportunity and point out how envious I always have been of poets? I mean, listen, I, you know... Poetry and, and writing in general was an artistry that I was never gifted with, okay? My background is in filmmaking, and I'm an actor. I live in my imagination. I love it. But there is a gift that poets have in the way that they're just able to string words together. And the melodic tone that it often carries, that leaves, well, listen, it leaves me wanting more. And I know a lot of you out there can relate as well. And this is exactly what we have in store. And listen, at the end of the day, don't take my word for it. Take Lisa's. It's her book. She's written it. She's going to be able to articulate it much better than I ever could. Sit back, strap in, and get ready for a fantastic ride. Lisa, first and foremost, welcome to People of Distinction, and thank you very much for being a guest. How are you doing today? I'm doing so good. You got me a little emotional there. Um, <laughs> so happy to be here. Well, listen, truer words were never spoken, Lisa, okay? I really do mean that. You really, and, and you know, just to, to put everything aside, you started it, okay? Because you've written this fantastic book and laid down a wonderful roadmap for me to follow. So thank you for writing it. And thank you even more for being a guest here with us to discuss it. I mean, it really is a pleasure. And I think with so much negativity that we have in the world today, a book of this magnitude is absolutely needed. So what you're doing here is special, and, and we are delighted to be a part of it. Now, before we go into your poetry book, Lisa, because I know we have a lot of information to discuss pertaining to it, start off by telling our listening audience a little bit more about yourself. Uh, sure. So um, I was born in the Philippines, um, and then when I was a toddler, we moved to Hawaii, and I was raised there. Mm. Um, but then at 13, uh, they, my parents decided to move us back to the Philippines. And that's really where this book starts, is me struggling with meeting my friends, um, with my family dynamic, and just feeling so lost and lonely yeah. in that process. And then also coming out uh, at the other end of it, um, much more enlightened and, and happy. You know, what a place to start, Lisa, because already I can see you formulating a bridge with our listening audience and really with myself, because people who amongst us can relate. I mean, wow, 
right? I, I, I'm going through the Rolodex of memories currently and thinking about when I was younger and moving around and having to start fresh. And, you know, as as time progressed, I often looked at that fresh start as a positive thing, right? Depending on the situation, mm -hmm. but it is difficult. <laughs> it is difficult. And there's, a, it's a precarious situation that you're placed in. So thank you very much for starting there. Because again, a lot of us are going to be able to resonate with just that notion. Lisa, talk to us a little bit more about your book, A Poet's Diary, and really what to find on those pages. It's 64 poems that I wrote um, between the ages of like 15 and 22, um, over 25 years ago, I'm kind of giving my age away there. Um, <laughs> and it, it's divided into nine books that kind of run the gamut of human emotion. So it goes from sorrow to, um, you know, pride. Yeah. And then at the other end comes out with reason, love and truth. Really it's, it's directed towards teenagers and young adults that um, may feel lost or mm -hmm. hurt or unsure of themselves, maybe have a difficult home life. And want, I want to share with them how I had that also, but I really came out the other side as, um, I think, you know, a good person. And, yeah. um, and I was able to find happiness. With my next question here, I, I may be assuming a bit, and, and I'm going to apologize ahead of time because you know what happens when you assume, right? So, you know, <laughs> I'm going to do a culmination of assuming, but also asking you to clarify as well. When it comes to inspiration, as you mentioned, these were poems that you wrote during your teenage and young adult years. Now, it sounds, based upon your experience and what you've articulated so far, that this almost maybe was something that was therapeutic or dare I say cathartic for you to kind of get off of your chest but you took it a step further and you published it now for the masses what inspired you to do that a and b where does that love for poetry come from so um as a child as a young child um I was a voracious reader mm -hmm. and uh I loved Robert Frost um Edgar Allan Poe yeah um and it was just, it just came um, naturally to me when I was feeling something very deeply that words would come. And I would, I remember just like getting up in the middle of the night and, and stanzas would come to me and I would have to write them down in the dark and then the next morning kind of decipher them. <laughs> um, and it was just a, a way that I expressed myself. And I think maybe it was that way because I was, I was quite lonely Hmm. Um, there was really no one to talk to about things. And so that was my way of verbalizing and getting out what I had inside. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm t people, I'm telling you, man, this, this is something that we can all connect to. You got to head on over to Amazon and Barnes and Noble. The title is A Poet's Diary by Lisa Michelle Middleton. This is something you want to add to your shelf. I'm already sold, and we've just begun. I mean, there is so much here to grab. And Lisa, with my next question here, i got to hurry up and ask, because I know my listening audience is going to get very upset with me if I don't move in this direction, okay? Now, this is a collection <laughs> of poems. Well, without further ado, Lisa, if you have a poem that you could share with us, we would love to partake in it. I absolutely do. Um, so this poem is called A Broken Rose, and it's from the Book of Pride. Remember I said there were nine books in, mm -hmm. in this poetry book. Um, so I will share that with you now. Are you guys ready? Absolutely. Broken Rose. Darling, the storm clouds have settled in. The raging waves have washed the shore. I've been hanging over a monstrous cliff and found I can't hold on anymore. My mind's consumed by misery. Endless tears have terrorized my soul. I found the gate to my success, but fear I haven't fair to pay the toll. And in the mist you stood a knight, shield in hand and sword withdrawn. You would have fought in the approaching foes, not knowing they had come and gone. Instead, the wind whispered silence, and these crying trees rustled to regret. My lips were cold with empty smiles, thinking fame them would make me forget. But I realized this oak I thought I was, 
fell with every gust of whirling wind. And instead of asking help to enforce the roots, I thought it strong to hold pain in. For stubborn pride keeps me alone and says I deserve the tears I've cried. They built a wall to ward off weakness and coaxed me to the outer side. And now I lay there, a broken rose, all strength cast into the silent storms. My hand and heart reach out to you. Please pull me from these deadly thorns. Mm. There is something that is so, of course, deep, but visceral about what you, the words that you put together. And again, I love the fact that you didn't shy away. Because listen, here's the thing. I, and and, and, and I, I know I'm going to be generalizing here, right? And I'm not a poet. By no means am I an expert. But I feel like a lot of poems, and well, I guess depending on the poet, right? But a lot of poems mm-hmm. generally are very nice and upbeat and and flowery in a way, if that makes sense. And the fact that you're not shying away from these darker emotions, because that is human, right? I mean, listen, on the journey that we all take, there are rainbows and butterflies, but then there are stormy days. And Absolutely. I love how you captured that within the poem to really showcase that, because again, it is it resonates profoundly with myself and I and I know my listening audience is right there with me. You know, my next question here for you, Lisa, and all artists can relate to this, not only writers, but how do you handle the vulnerability that comes with sharing your work with the world, particularly when when it touches upon something personal in terms of the emotionals or experiences that you've had? Well I think um I think when I was younger Maybe I wouldn't have wanted to share it so much, mm-hmm. right? But as as I got older, you realize that that's your salvation, really. Yeah. When you you share all this with the world, with others, um, not so much just for your own benefit, but for their benefit. Um, and I think if we all just communicate with each other and and are truthful about what we feel and what we think. Um, it's just this, the the way to help each other, and ultimately, as you know, we stated in the beginning, um, find happiness. Happiness is in connecting with other people. Yeah, I think that's really um, why I'm ready now to to share these again. You touched up on something very powerful when you said, you know, and. Well, I'm I'm paraphrasing, but essentially you were talking about unmasking, right? Where people are no longer hiding behind lies and being open and communicating with one another. And it resonated profoundly because people, how many of us can relate, especially in this social media age that we currently live in that is only getting stronger, (laughs) I recognize this every single day. I, you know, I'm, I currently reside in Southern California, have been for the past two decades. And listen, here in Los Angeles, man, a, as a filmmaker, there is a lot of hidden lives here, right? And there is a there is a portrayal that people put on that people put out that isn't actually what is happening. And when it comes to social media, there are images that people put out, but that's not really their lives. That's not really how people are conducting behind the scenes. And imagine the world that we would be in and the purity within it if we weren't putting up these facades, right? If we weren't hiding behind Mm -hmm. these, these masks. I mean, there is something that is scary get liberating about the thought of that and I don't know maybe it's just me because again when I grew up technology wasn't here I mean we technology was really just starting to advance in terms of computers were just coming around and you know I'm aging myself here a bit as well Uh, computers were just (laughs) starting to be developed and the internet was in its infancy stages and its beta stages so there really wasn't the opportunity to do that and now I see how much the world has shifted and where it just continues to go and again, there, there's a part of it that is pretty scary, but I, I, I love what she's touching upon here. You know, Lisa, uh, we're going to we're going to dive down the rabbit hole a little here with this one. So stick with me. But if you could enter the world of the book that you've created and the poems that you created, 
which page would you land on and why? Oh, gosh, that's a good one. Mm. Well, I would say that the world that this book lives in is a whole world, Mm -hmm. okay, Um, with darkness and light, um, ocean, desert. There's even some trains in there and snow in there. Um, So there's not really one poem that showcases the world that it's in. You kind of have to read all of them. (laughs) People, you know, you know what I'm taking from that. That's kind of like asking a parent who their favorite child is, right? Well, you, you just can't pinpoint one, right? It's like I love them all the same. I get it. Listen, I'm I'm here with you, Lisa, because it is very difficult. Like, I get it. In certain projects that I've created, I get how it's difficult to try to 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 separate them because they all are just. They're like your children, right? I mean, you've given birth to them, and, mm-hmm. and they're there. So, I, I, I love the the answer that you've that you've given. I was trying to test her there, people, but she didn't fall for it. All right? <laughs> she didn't fall for it. You know, as we start to close out here, Lisa, I love having this platform. As I mentioned a number of times, I'm an artist myself, and I always look for opportunities whenever they present themselves. Of course, to pay it forward to other artists out there listening in. Now, you are someone that has been through the writing process. This is a a journey that has been in the making. Not only have you comprised this fantastic book and published it, you have another poetry book that you are currently in the process of creating and getting set to release very shortly. So I'd be doing my listening audience a disservice if I didn't ask. But for any new writers out there listening in, not even just poets, just writers in general, what are some words of wisdom that you could offer them about the journey they're getting ready to take? I'd say, um, first of all, be true to yourself, right? Mm. Um, But also, you need to have patience. You know, you're not going to get success on the first try. Yeah. You're going to fail. But just keep at it. Keep trying. Keep getting it out there. Um, And eventually, I think, you can find success. That's wonderful advice I mean, for for writers, but just for people in general. I mean, what she's talking about here is perseverance, and and I get it. The fear of rejection, the fear of failure, is daunting and and can almost seem insurmountable sometimes. But people, listen. At the end of the day, ain't nothing to it but to do it, right? And putting yourself out there. The way I've always looked at it is the the question of what if usually seems much worse to me than failing. And I know it's easier said than done. I'm oversimplifying here. And for the sake of the interview, an oversimplification is what's needed. But great advice in terms of just, listen, at the end of the day, just put the words to the page and just just go for it. Um, because ultimately, mm-hmm. that's going to, to, to really be liberating in so many ways. People... What more can be said? I mean, well, actually, let me take that back. A lot more can be said, and I like it that way, because now you have to head on over to Amazon and Barnes & Noble and purchase your copies so you can figure it all out for yourself. This book is magnificent for so many reasons. As we close out here, because I cannot think of a better way to do so than with another one of your fantastic poems. So, Lisa, if you have another one readily available, myself, my listening audience, we are all ears. I do. I have one for here for you. Okay, so this is called The Jay and Daffodil. It's from The Book of Truth. It's the second to the last poem, mm-hmm. so it's an important one. The Jay and Daffodil. They say the world is black with pain, but its tears are not seen in any drop of rain. Humanity says we've lost the way, but the sun still brings tomorrow after today. They say more wars are bound to come, but I refuse a life lived on the run. For the awakened have found the final key. Let's listen to their true tales of eternity. For the mountains do not cry out in fear, and the seasons cycle endlessly year after year. A leaf doesn't know such pride or pain that courses through a selfish vein. For if you ask the jay or daffodil 
what life is like upon the hill. A sweet song will come from the shades of trees, and silence will sweep the hill in a summer breeze. For life to them is not of who or why, nor do they question the purpose of sea or of sky. The sun is not one that circles an endless space, but instead is the source of warmth upon every face. I say the world is more than a house of death, that it's the source of beauty and everlasting breath. Humanity will see that there is a way if we only focus on the moment, on the present, on today. Mm. <laughs> Hopeful. Hopeful, hopeful, hopeful. That's a fantastic way to close out. People, listen, you 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 know, I, I often like to close out of interviews with a spiel, offering a reflection. It's not even right to do that in this instance. That was a beautiful poem of hope, of inspiration, looking towards tomorrow. No matter what storms you may be weathering today, there's always sunshine at the end of it and a brighter day to come. I love that. It's called The Poet's Diary. Head on over, pick it up from Amazon, Barnes & Noble by Lisa Michelle Middleton. Check back in frequently for her next one the moment it becomes available. This is something you're going to want to add to your shelf. And I'm going to take it a step further. This is something you're going to want to add to someone else's shelf as a gift as well because this is something we all need. I love that. Lisa, this has been a true pleasure, an absolute delight. Thank you once again for being a guest on People of Distinction. Thank you so much for having me.